Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here and you are looking for a very active worm community that likes to help each other out and succeed in worm farming, then you are in the right place. So right now we're going to look in on my European Nightcrawler bin and see what they're doing. Okay, because we have to get in here and really do a deep dive today because we've been avoiding that to keep the the fig cuttings still so that we can get some roots out of them. So we're getting some roots on that, so that's good. But now it's time to do a deep dive. Today's topic is going to be the food that we feed the worms. We have a lot of questions. People have problems with foods and they kind of look at it like, do the worms like this food or they not like the food? And quite honestly, it's not really about like or not like. What it is about is availability. So as I'm going here, I'm just picking out any plastic that may have came in on the paper that I've shredded or something like that. But the, the main topic here is going to be the food that I feed. And how, you know, some people say you should not feed citrus, that you should not feed um, protein sources because it could cause protein poisoning. So I just wanted to kind of go over you know, how do I get away with what I get away with? And some people, you know, point to the fact that I have these very large bins, and you're right, that is absolutely one of the reasons that I get away with feeding things, because this bin is three feet long. So if I put food down here, the worms can move over, you know, a couple of feet, if there is something unpalatable at the time for that food. And then after the mites and the springtails and what have you have gotten into that food and have broken it down a little bit, then the you know compost worms can get in there and finish it off. So that is one of the reasons that I can get away with feeding food that is considered forbidden. But another thing is also reminding yourself that worm farming is kind of, you know, it's a marathon, it is not a sprint. And quite honestly, if you've been worm farming for less than, let's say, six or eight months, you may not have the ecosystem that allows you to feed foods that are difficult for just worms to eat. So the t I don't, you know, honestly know where these bugs come from. Do they come in on the food? Do they come in on the paper that I feed? Do they come in on me, you know, walking in from the environment? I'm not sure. People have asked me. Where do the mites come from? Where do the springtails come from? You know, and all of that. In my basement, it could just be the environment because it is a brick floor basement in a super old house. So God knows what's growing down here. But for everybody else, you know, in normal situations, they still end up with mites and springtails. And so I think that, you know, possibly they come in on the food and they might come in on us humans as we're walking through our yard or walking through, you know, slowly just shows up. So, you know, that's the big thing is the environment that the worms live in is, you know, think of it kind of like a, an immune system. So if you get sick, then, you know, your body will react to the sickness and behave accordingly so that it can fight off an infection. So if you think of your worm bin kind of as your immune system, if it gets food that is too difficult for the worms to eat, then you will often see a bloom of the mites or the springtails. Some of it is environmental as well, um, where you know if it's hot or it's cold or it's too wet or too dry, you will also get a bloom of different kinds of insects because the conditions are right for them to live in. So that is one of the things that I wanted to talk about is how do the worms eat the food? Of course, they do have mouths and they can consume food directly if it is in such a shape that they can. You know what I mean? Like you can't put the whole hamburger in your mouth, or at least most people can't. You gotta break it into pieces and that's what the rest of the bin critters are doing is breaking it into pieces. This is getting a little bit muddy in here, but I'm not seeing any springtails. I do have my readers on today, 
So I'm not seeing springtails or a bloom of mites, but I'm willing to bet if we go into the area where the, the food last was fed, we might see a higher concentration of those helper critters. So I'm trying to flip this so that the stuff that was on the bottom is on the top now. Again, the bottom is, it's pretty muddy. So this is overdue, well overdue for having flipped the bin like this. Yeah, it disturbs the worms a little bit, but these are European night crawlers. Don't usually have to worry about them. I don't even have to put the light on to get them to settle back down. All right, so we're getting closer to the food part here, and I have a wide variety of food to feed today. So I will have a lot of examples of what I'm talking about. So one of the things that right now you're seeing me pick out plastic. Sometimes paper has like a laminated plastic in there. And unfortunately you don't know it until after the worms have eaten everything around it. I know I could, oops, I could take it off in the first place or just not feed it, but I'm all about, you know, rescuing, rescuing things from the landfill. So in my bins, I try and feed as much as I can because that's my, my goal. If your goal is something else, then you don't need to feed junk mail and, and things like that. All right, we're getting into where the food was last time. You might start seeing some things. All right, let me uh, move the camera to the other side. Okay, here we are at the end. So far, I'm just seeing the little bit of ginger skin and some sticks. I do have a lot of things that kind of uh, spend years in here. This looks like a potato that must not have been frozen. It's not that the worms don't like this potato, it is that it has not been broken down by the other creatures. So potatoes that have not been cooked are a super slow food. Pumpkin stems. Oops, hey, I didn't even mean to do that. So that was the 2021 pumpkin stem. Just the top of it's getting used up at this point. Okay, oh, worm ball. Okay, so must have been a whole bunch of food in here that the, the worms finally managed to get into. I'm not seeing any of the bin critters. I'm seeing a few pot worms. But other than that, looks like they are doing a good job. Avocado pit, those take six months to a year, depending. Okay, feels like I have another worm ball in here. Yep. Look at that. Good worms. Let's see, what are they all around? Not, not sure. This could be a potato, an uncooked potato. Kind of break it open a little bit here. So if this was mashed potatoes, this would be gone by now. It's been three or four weeks since we've been into this bin. And so a cooked potato would be already consumed, but the uh, raw potatoes, you, know, you just get some in the bottom. And weirdly enough, when the worms eat, and the worms and the worms critters eat all of the stuff off of things, they don't stink. It's like they eat all the stuff that has the stinking. So, good job. All right, so those are really long-term food. So there's one of my examples is potatoes. It's not that they don't like these potatoes. It's very simply that they're not degraded to the point where they can slurp them up with their tiny little mouths. Okay, good deal. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna get them a little bit of bedding and then I am going to get them some more food. As you can tell, there's probably four or five pounds of worms in this bin, so they are definitely going to need a little bit more food to get them through. Okay, I don't really have a bunch of shredded paper, apparently, ready, so I'm just going to take some of this packing paper and put that down as a base for their next feeding. And we're going to take a really close look at the feeding so that I can show you the different kinds of food that they eat and approximately how often you can expect a need to replenish it. 
Okay, so this is about two gallons of food. And I'm just gonna point out a couple things here. I've got some wheat bread that uh, is gone, but you can tell it's really been saturated with water. That should go pretty fast. Here's a banana peel, hasn't been frozen. So that is probably going to take us a month or two to get all the way through. And then the only thing that'll be left is that stem. Melon is one of the fastest foods there is. This has not been frozen, but yet I'm willing to bet the only thing that may be left here is just this top outer skin. More banana peels, mango peels. Um, those also go very, very quickly. My tea bags here, um, I started trying to get the brand that decomposes all the way. And the only thing I ever find is the staple sometimes. So then um, here's a pineapple and that will be here for probably the next six months in some way. We'll probably expect to find a bloom of mites that start getting this cleaned up before the worms can get to it. Here's some sweet potato. This has been frozen, so maybe we'll have to see, but I still think that sweet potato peels and whatnot are gonna be slower food. So we're just gonna, here's some onions and some pepper. Here's some avocado. That's also very slow. Even though this pineapple, this part's been frozen, it'll still take forever. I think it's a combination of the acidity of it as well as the fibrous nature of the pineapple. So if you have questions about different kinds of food, uh, let me know. I have yet to find anything that I really don't wanna feed, um, with the exception of one thing. I did an experiment last year in regards to, can you feed them meat? And the answer to that question was yes, but I will say I probably won't do it. And the reason that I won't do it is because it did attract gnats. If I, even though I really tried hard to bury it deeply, I tried to put a lid on it, um, for some reason the flies found it anyway and it was nasty. So even though the worms did manage to eat all of that meat, I am definitely not going to uh, do that again. I don't know that there's any way to uh, prevent all the bugs and whatnot from deciding to find that. So um, although they can eat meat and eggs, and I think I fed chicken and pork, maybe some beef, and uh, although the worms and their friends did manage to eat it all, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> probably ever again just because of the after effects where um, basically I have been fighting having flies in the basement for three or four months afterwards. Uh, you know, I've got fly traps everywhere. I've got my handy dandy vinegar traps that do work as you can see here. Basically, Although the worms can eat it, uh, you know, maybe for an outside bin, that would be the thing to do. But uh, when they say that it attracts pests, they are not choking. It's nasty. Okay, well, that was the European night crawlers. And they are in this bin, which is one half of a 55 gallon drum. If you have any questions, please feel free to put that below. If you want to see more about this bin or the European night crawlers, I have an entire playlist that I will put over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like a video that I put over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.